you talked about how at the poker table you can have the highest of highs and the lowest of lows and that's where you've experienced some of your highest highs and lowest lows except you can't show what you're feeling yeah man it's like that absolutely had an effect on me a negative effect because you have to truly mute your emotions because when you're at the poker table if you're internally celebrating when you're fucking winning a hand then when you lose it's like man you got that much further to fall and also you kind of look like a jerk off celebrating you know when mm. you're playing with a fucking rich dude and also it makes him less you know prone to want to lose more money right if, if you don't give a fuck then he's like oh whatever it doesn't matter but if you're like over there clapping and fucking jumping up and down he's like i don't want to give this motherfucker one more <laughs> dollar you know and so a big piece of like poker for me was always you know, I had to kind of like, you know, um, you know, make sure those relationships were taken care of. You know, like with Sam, I put up with a lot of fucking bullshit because I'm beating the dude for like tens of millions of dollars. Um, like the motherfucker would call me up and be waiting at his fucking house or 40, just shit that I would not put up with from any other motherfucker. Mm. I would because like, you know, I'm beating the fucking dude for money. So kind of made me a little bit of a bitch to these guys. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, like I just, I wanted to fucking win, you know? And so that, that guy, Alec, actually, he just... Um, he saw my Nelk Boys podcast and he uh, he texted me. He's like, you know, he's like, I said it was, I said I beat him for like forty to fifty million, and he's like, oh, the number wasn't that high, blah blah blah. He's like, you know, this and that. Like, I want to play you like heads up. Let's see who has the bigger ooh, balls for like twenty five million a piece. And I texted him back. I said, dude, I, I beat you for five point five million. I beat you for seven point seven. I beat you for ten point eight. I beat you for twelve point whatever. And I beat you like four or five other times for like small numbers. It was a hundred percent over forty million. And I was like, and I'll play you for 20, 25 million at the Aria if you want to fucking wire it in next week. And then she's like, oh, I don't want to play for unless it's 50 or 100 million. I was like, I'll wire in 50 million to the Aria in 10 days if you want to play and we can televise it if you want. And so he's challenged me twice and I've accepted. So, I mean, I think we might fucking play for $100 million, which would be like the craziest, biggest oh game my God. ever. Can we come watch that? Yeah, I mean, I, I want to fucking pay per view the motherfucker. I, I was going to say, you, you have to. You, you, have, you, you live stream or something. That's fucking amazing. No, I mean, it would be the biggest poker game ever played. And the beauty of that is, like, it just shuts the fuck up everybody that was, like, talking shit. Like, you can't win this much money in poker. I mean, like, and I never really cared that much, but I have all the fucking wires. Like, it's mm. not like maybe it's not. No, I know exactly what i beat this motherfucker for i have every incoming wire and i fucking you know i posted some posted, i put a picture yeah. of the motherfucker ben. i put the wire fuck you know what i mean all of it it's not like maybe you know it's and, and you don't have to be a fucking genius to fucking beat a super rich guy for a lot of money if you're playing high stakes you know and he, and he had won i think like 700 million dollars that year beating another billionaire so like these games do exist he's like idiot poker pros just they don't have access to them you know and so a big part of poker is getting into those games just playing with fucking bad play because at the end of the day like you know with with boxing it's like you know you want to beat the best boxer and whatever but then you know maybe you take your brother's approach he just wants to make the fucking money and mm -hmm. i respect that you know mm -hmm. what i mean like yeah okay he he didn't fucking go eight rounds of floyd like you did respect for that but he's made a lot of fucking money still mm -hmm. you know like and and, and so it's like you know, there's a lot of fucking boxers that are probably better than your brother that aren't making that fucking money. Your brother in boxing is me in fucking poker. Mm. He's picking the right opponents. Yeah. And, and you're and this is where I started the your psychology of people and knowing what table to sit yourself at. Cause correct me if I'm wrong, you're 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 a pretty good player. Yeah, I am good, but I'm not like amazing. That's like what I'm like, saying. like at the time that I was playing, I was really good. Now, these guys are way better as far as like, you know, understanding the game, like fundamentals, GTO, the whole thing. But at the time I was playing, I was pretty fucking good, but I was playing with horrible players. Mm. You were, know? Do, do mm. you, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, were you playing mostly in casinos or at these, these high stakes like LA, Vegas games? Because I've heard about some of these fucking games in LA and I heard they're, they're nuts. Yeah, I heard so, the shit that goes on in them are, are crazy. Yeah, it's absurd, man. I was playing Molly's game. I played, you know, Cassavetti's game. I was playing, you know, a lot of heads up. Like, a lot of heads up with... I mean, look, just between fucking Alec and Sam, there's two guys. I mean, that's over $50 million in one year. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think people really fucking get that. Like, I don't think they understand. Like, mm. $50 million, two guys, and a probably a total of, like, 20 fucking sessions. You understand, people. Why do these fucking billionaires throw money le like this repeatedly with you if they continue losing like I, what's the thrill well there's ego right i mean that's that's a big piece like you want to beat somebody okay. um and also for them it's like does the does like 25 40 million really matter if you got two billion dollars like i mean yeah it's like you know i'm sure it stings but they didn't lose it in one session mm. right he's like you know mm. at first it was like a couple million then he upped it you know then it was you know five and a half 
you know, then we played a little bit bigger. It was, you know, 7.7. .7, and then, you know, towards the end, it's like 5 million minimum buy-in, 10K, 25K blinds. So like the money that I was winning actually wasn't a crazy amount for how big we were playing, but he was playing really bad. So, you know, it was, but I also could have <laughs> lost, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like this was a lock. Like I really fucking put my nuts on the table, you know? So yeah. it was something that I feel like a lot of people probably wouldn't have been willing to do. And yeah. if they lost once that, this is the scary part. If you lose, then where do you go? Like, are you going to go back and play the fucking kitty games? Or are you going to come back and play this guy? And then if you lose again, what do you do? Right? Are you going to fucking lose a third time? Because then, you know, we lose a fourth time. You know, we might be fucking broke. Now you're in trouble. And then what the fuck do you do? Now you just lost $40, 50000000 million. You went from being a fucking relatively rich guy to now being completely fucking broke. I mean, like, think about that. That's a lot of stress, dude.